Hello and welcome back to the channel. It's time for a classic. I've really not done that many kind of classic beers so far. I've done a lot of modern craft stuff and not a whole lot of kind of my original favourites. Um, I'm big on Belgian beer. This is one of kind of the most typical. Um, uh, Duvel, Duvel, however you want to pronounce it. I'm, to be honest, I don't really know how you pronounce it. I've always called it Duvel, but I've only ever really seen it written down. I've never talked about it other than ordering one. No one's ever corrected me, so I'm not really sure. But anyway, yeah, this is it. It's a Belgian blonde. Kind of needs no introduction. Uh, it's a Belgian strong blonde speciality beer. It's eight and a half percent. Starting my weekend well, and um, that's it. I mean, I know what this is like. I've had it many times, so I kind of don't need to shy away from tasting notes on the bottle. Not that there is any, I don't believe, but uh, slow brewed to perfection. I'm not sure how long that actually means. Fourth generation Morgat family. Um, you know what? It's big beer. It's a big institution, but as I recall, it's pretty damn good. I've not actually had one of these for a couple of years, I don't think, because it was one of those things I typically pick up kind of in a bar when there was nothing else that I really fancied on draft. Never had a huge amount of it at home, but I fancied changing that today. So before we crack into that, here is a quick look at the bottle. Right, I don't have a Duvel glass, unfortunately, but I do have a Duvel bottle opener. Um, I picked that up at a special Duvel tasting night that took place at a very kind of craft real ale kind of pub near me a couple of years back and um, yeah I've also got a luggage bag for some reason but no glass anyway let's get into it oh that smell so very heavily carbonated and a terrible pour as a result well I messed that one up I can't really reshoot that can I um actually I could I've got another one in the fridge but I'm not going to we'll um, we'll keep this honest that smell is just just quintessential fresh Belgian beer. Oh, I've never drank one of these kind of actively reviewing it, thinking about it. I've always just drank it and enjoyed it. So this will be interesting, possibly a bit of an eye opener for me. One thing that I have noticed recently since kind of starting this YouTube channel and talking to other beer reviewers that a lot of people describe Belgian beers as banana-like. I uh, really don't like banana, as I, I think I've said in a previous video. But um, So I'm hoping that that bit of knowledge doesn't start to creep in and ruin them for me. But they also often get compared to bubblegum and, and those sorts of things, so we'll find out shortly. Just while we wait for the head on that to go down, I mean, the clarity and the colour is always super appealing on these. Let's try and get some aromas while we wait for all that head to dissipate. always find them very grain forward, whether that be wheat or barley or whatever, it's just kind of that earthy grain note. Um, I don't really know how else to describe it little bit cereally. It's got sweetness in there. It has got that slightly bubblegum style aroma. I think it's quite subtle in this though. It's only just a, a little bit at the back at the minute. Maybe it's to do with the, how big the head is on this, but I'm not getting banana, but I don't really like bananas. I kind of avoid them. So it's hard for me to really argue and pick out that one. It's got it's got a bit of a note that I think I picked out in a Lord's Brewing Co beer I reviewed, which one was it, yesterday, day before, I can't remember which one it was now, because um, I've done a few of those this week, but now I'm trying to remember, slightly herby, oh, I described it as the herb of Jägermeister, it doesn't quite go for that in this, in this it's, it starts there and ends up a little bit, like a, like a natural disinfectant kind of smell. It's probably the alcohol quantity in this that's really doing that, right? I'll be honest, I'm not getting a great deal more from this. Obviously, this is just generic beer. It's not meant to taste like anything else. It's just Belgian beer. Right, I'm gonna stop pretending that I can get anything else out of the aromas on this, because I really don't think I can. And let us enjoy. Cheers. Oh, it's so strong. I mean, maybe it's because normally I'd have a couple of lighter beers before we get into this, but that shows itself immediately today. Also, it's a bit dishwater on the top. You see the bubbles on that? I know it was a bad pour, but I mean, it's really not settling down very well. The alcohol in that is really showing itself. Let me um, top this up. Oh, 
That is why we have the bar towel up here. So it's turning into a very lively one, this one. Um, I'll be totally honest, this isn't as good as I remember it, which is a bit disappointing, but you know, I mean, I don't know, whether it's, what's the date on this? August next year, right? This is nowhere near its best before. Um, it's over a year away. I just, I don't know, maybe you need to ramp up to this kind of beer with a few lighter ones, but I know some of the other big boys left, that kind of thing, that I can just drink that first one, no problem. In this, it is really starting to show itself. But that said, now I've poured all of it into the glass, it is starting to um, mellow a bit, round out a bit, whether that's because my taste buds have just become accustomed to the alcohol onslaught as a result of this, or whether stuff has started separating the bottle and as a result this has become a bit uneven. Um, so now it's improving. Let's go for kind of a top to bottom taste profile. I'm still really not happy about that appearance though. It's all a bit sooty. Initially, tiniest bit bitter. Sweet lick, not very descriptive sweetness, not a fruit, not a toffee. It's just that kind of, it, the slight bubble gumminess, but really it's just a little lingering sweetness. And then you get a nice, just crisp mouth covering. It's a bit of light malt, a bit of subtle hops, and a lot, a lot of carbonation. That peaks in a bit of a spike, a bit of a zing which I think is probably mainly alcohol burn on the tongue and a bit in the back of the throat and then the finish bit of fizzy carbonation but it's actually very smooth considering how strong it is the alcohol doesn't really get you in the back of the throat it's more of just a zing in the middle section there so let's pop that down for a minute try and get all of this in again and take a look at the bottle established in 1871 so it's Pretty old, not the oldest though. Uh, Duvel, the original Belgian strong blonde, speciality beer, beer de speciality in French, 8.5%, uh, 330ml bottle, fourth generation, Morgat family, as I said before, slow brewed to perfection. Uh, on the back, ingredients water, barley, malt, sugar, hops, yeast. Interesting, they add sugar to it as well. I guess that's how they get the uh, crazy ABV out of it. Uh, Duvel joined the tornado. There's an interesting little. Oh graphic on the back there of the guy surfing in Duvel. Um, that'll ruin your beachwear. Uh, Duvel is a Belgian beer with a twist. Once poured, the finely crafted D at the bottom of each glass unleashes its own twist through a bubbly tornado caused by weeks of fermentation in this bottle. You've been warned. Oh! Ah! I think this is meant to be served into a glass with the, I can't remember what the proper term is, but you know the little dots at the bottom to kind of get it going. Um, and this doesn't have it, which might explain the bad pour and the bad appearance, so we'll let them off on that one. Um, it doesn't say anything else on the bottle, um, which is you know, fine to be expected with someone of this size, they don't really need any introduction. Um, but yeah, has this changed at all? I'm guessing not, because I'm fairly familiar with it, but let's find out. Mellowing out a touch, getting a bit citrus zingy now in the middle. Very subtle though, not like a IPA style, like a a really really low ever so slightly bitter and sweet at the same time lemon sensation yeah but just very diluted starting to lose the bubblegum a bit it's now becoming more sweet and citrus bubblegum slightly stronger on the nose though now and yeah that's it I'm um I'll be honest I was kind of really excited to do this not had a Dubel for ages really liked it and it's been a bit underwhelming. Now, um, I think the glass is wrong, so if you are going to buy some of these, I suggest you get it in kind of a lager glass where you can get that um, carbonation moving and hopefully settle the beer down a bit. And ultimately, this is just infinitely better on tap. So if you get the chance, yeah, give it a go. And that, unfortunately, is all I have to say about it. So as always, thank you very much for watching. If you will enjoy this video, please like it if you haven't already subscribed, if you will be so kind. And I'll catch you next time. Cheers.